So not by accident that uh, what, what God told me to speak on this morning. And that is restoration. Now, I'm not probably not going to make it all the way through what, what, what I have here, but see, that's all we're talking about this morning. Was, we're talking about restoration. We're talking about the restoration of the things that have been stolen. Hold on, I don't think you heard me. We're talking about the restoration of things that have been taken from each and every one of us. That have been stolen from us. Why have they been stolen? Because the devil took them but didn't have the authority to do so. That's what they call stealing. All those things have come, every single one of us could sit here and make a list. And now the enemy has attacked us. The enemy has come upon us and taken things from us. The enemy has taken finances, healing, health, our family members. But I'm here to tell you this morning that we serve a God that is about restoration. We serve a God that wants to be in full fellowship with us. We serve a God that promised us before it happened that he was going to, that was going to be repaid to us, everything that was stolen. You know, and in, uh, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says that, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of what? Peace and not evil. And to give you an expected end. Well, that's the thing is, see, the restorer already knows the end from the beginning. The restorer has an expected end for each and every one of us. When you get up and you look in the mirror in the morning, you can look at the mirror and you can say, hey, you need to get in line with the expected end that the Lord has already set for me. See, because many times it's about us lining up with that. It's not about him lining up with our will because our will is junk. It's about us lining up with that expected end that he already has for us. In Joel 2.25, It says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. My great army which I sent among you. And in verse 26 it says, and ye shall eat in plenty. Now is that just food? No, it's not. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord of the God, your God, that has dealt with you wondrously. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now, I know we've talked about this before, but that word ashamed, when we start looking it up and start studying it, that word ashamed means shortchanged. Shortchanged. It means that there was something that happened that you got shortchanged. Listen, there are many things in our lives right now where the enemy has stolen from us and we've been shortchanged from the full nature of what God wants for us. Many things. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God is speaking and he is, he is the God of restoration. He is in the restoration business and he is wanting restoration for us. I heard very clearly this morning when I was studying for this that we are going to start to see like never before. Now, we've always said this. We've always said, right, we're in this, in this world, but we're not of the world, right? And we've always talked about how we've, we come from a different kingdom, and we, we're out of a different kingdom, and we've talked about how we're ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. I want you to start watching because you're going to see more and more because the Lord told me this undoubtedly, without a doubt. I am 100% confident in this fact. That more and more, see we've said that all these years, we've said that all these years, but when we're walking in day-to-day -day life, we've seen just one, one world going down. And you're going to see more and more.
more and more, the ones that are walking with the Father have a path of restoration that they're going to be walking in. While you will very clearly see the path, the wide path, that everyone else is walking is not restoration. And you'll start to see those two paths separate because the Lord is restoring those things that had been stolen for him. He's restoring those things, those years, those every single one of those things. It's not just one thing he said he was going to restore to us. There was, there's four things in there that he said he was going to restore to us because they're different categories of all of our lives that have been thieved from us. It's on us, though. It's on us to walk looking for it. And expecting it. What's in it? It said in expected in. Well, the end has to be expected. Are you expecting that you're going to be restored to where you were supposed to be? Are you expecting this morning that those things are going to be restored to you? See, if you don't expect it, it's not going to happen. See, if I don't take my keys out to my car and go put that, when I put that key in the ignition, when I turn it, I'm expecting something. And what I'm telling you this morning is, is that we have to get, we have to get out of the world and get into the kingdom. We have to separate ourselves more and more every single day from the world and get more in the kingdom. And the only way you're going to be doing that is if you do it on purpose. You're not going to trip and fall and be in the kingdom. You're not going to accidentally wind up in the kingdom. You have to purposely, every single day, every single moment of the day, say, I am living a kingdom life today. Right? And then when that person says something to you that they shouldn't have said, you have to immediately say, no, no, I'm living in the kingdom. That person's words has nothing to do with me. See, too many times we let people talk. And we let people say things, and we can't, we can't control what people are going to say. But too many times, we're, we allow them to have an authority position in our life that they don't deserve. We allow them to have an th authority position in what's going to happen in our, in our life every single day when they don't have the authority to do that. And they're not even operating. It's not about them because they're not operating in their own. They're operating by the enemy, Right? What is he here to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. The only way it's going to happen is if we purposefully, every single day, put that foot forward. Put that, the, hey, listen, you start out every single day by saying, hey, today is kingdom day. Today is kingdom day. See, we all have to go to work. We all have to do the things that we have to do on a regular basis. But what the Lord is saying is, I'm going to restore you every step that you take every single day. If you're in the kingdom, if you're walking a kingdom life, if you are constantly, constantly, constantly pushing towards the kingdom. You know, I've been, I, I was thinking about it because I seen some video this morning, uh, even from the rain that we had last night. And how quickly, I mean, think about this. And I was talking, I think I talked to Kim about this earlier this week. It, we're in a drought. That's what they say, right? They say we're in a drought. We don't have the amount of rain that we have normally had at this time. But when it rains, it comes down. It comes down hard. It comes down fast. The, the ground can't keep up with it. You know, I've seen a video of uh, the street on uh, uh, Van Slyke down there by, by the shop. And, and just flooded, and water pouring up out of the storm drains. Because it came so fast, so hard, that the street and the drains and everything couldn't keep up with it. What I'm telling you right now is, the restoration that God has for us is going to come so fast, so hard, that nothing that we have is going to keep up with it, but only if we make that choice. But only if we make that choice. God wants to do something 
in our lives. God wants to use us every single day. God wants, we don't have time, I've said this so many times, you know, but it's, it, it, today it's, it's more true than it was yesterday. And today is more true than it was the last time I said it. We don't have time to play. We don't have time to mess around. We don't have time to, to jump fence side to side. We have to. We have to be kingdom-minded no other way. Kingdom-minded only. We don't have time to play. You know, um, in Psalm 107, it actually says that he turns the wilderness into standing water and the dry ground into water springs. See, that's what our God wants to do for us. That's what our God wants to do for us. He loved us so much. We know in John 3, 16, it says, He loved us so much that He sent His greatest treasure. See, sometimes we read that wrong. He sent His only Son, as you know, we memorize it. And listen, He loved us so much that He sent the greatest, the most price, priceless thing that he had he sent to go on a cross to sacrifice to bring us back into fellowship to bring us back into the kingdom why in the world would we do anything less than participate in that why in the world would we do anything less than be full-on kingdom all the time but see there are there's some requirements there's some requirements of us. Turn with me to Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible. Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. Let's stop there. That's twice he said, don't be afraid. You think it might be important? Why do we not have to be afraid? Because we are in covenant with God. He said, I am your God. That's why you don't have to be afraid. Not because things aren't bad out there in the world. Not because there's not terrible things out there. It's because we are in covenant with the Father. It's because he is our God. That's the reason we don't have to be scared. See, we just, uh, we, uh, last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, we took the kids and we went to a water park and we uh, were, were going through all these slides and stuff like that, right? Well, my daughter, inherently, all the time, she's scared of everything, which is something we constantly fight with, right? My son, five-year-old, not scared of anything. He'll usually do anything, does, doesn't think about the consequences of what he's going to do. Um, but we get to this water park, and so I'm focused on her because I have made it a rule in my house. I am not going to let these kids grow up being scared of everything because then it translates over to everything in their life, and, and it translates into the spiritual realm. So I made her go right away. We got into that water park right away. I made her go up on a, on a slide with me. The whole entire way, she was not wanting to do it. I said, boom, come on, let's go. You're getting it. In the thing we go. Afterwards, she comes up to me, and she gives me a big hug. She says, thank you for making me do that. Right? But then at the end of the trip, my son's been running all over the place, and he's been playing on these slides. They've got this little kitty area, and they've got uh, these two slides that are a little lower, and then they've got two slides that are a little taller well he's fine with the ones that are little but then i said why don't you go up there and go on those ones and he's like no i ain't doing that i'm not doing that and just fought and fought and fought about it well because of that, i said you're going to go try it i'm not letting you out of it so i took him by the hand all the way up there we got right to the he's crying and shaking and he doesn't want to do it i put him in the slide and i pushed him and i said all right you're going to try i pushed him down the slide it wasn't a big slide. It wasn't a big deal. He gets down to the end. He jumps up and he says, can I do that again? But see, that's the thing is we allow our fear to override our father. We, are, we allow that fear to hold us back from that relationship. 
we allow the fear to keep us handicapped, to keep us arrested, handcuffed to where we are currently. That's the reason we can't move forward a lot of times is because we can't stop walking in fear because we've got to get a full understanding of who our Father is. And I've said that before too. You know who my daddy is? How many times have you heard stars say that, things like that? There's, you know, even somebody that might, you know, their, their, uh, their father might be a local politician or something, and they get pulled over, and that's the first, do you, do you know who I am? Do you know? See, that's what we should be doing, because the devil, that's the issue. The devil does know who you are, and he knows the power that you have, but he knows that if you don't use it, he's got you. So in that section of scripture, it says, don't, do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take a hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, and salvation. But see, there's a requirement. In Isaiah 43, 18, turn with me there. Here's the next requirement. I think this is the kicker for most of us. Again, we're talking about restoration. While you're turning there, I'm just going to tell, tell you right now, those of you that are live streaming with us, God cares about you. God loves you. God sacrificed his only son for you. Those things that you have been stolen from, those things that have been taken from you, God wants to restore every single one of those things in your life. And he wants to restore the salvation and the peace. So many of you are walking this world and walking this earth and, and going about your day-to-day -day business and you are not in peace. God wants to restore that peace. God wants to restore that peace to you today. Isaiah 43, 18. Remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you know it not. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The Message Bible says it like this, forget about what's happened, don't keep going over it like old history. See, I think that's where we get hung up a lot of times. The things that were, the things that have been, the, some, you know, that you don't know what that person did to me, you don't know what that person said to me, you don't know, you don't know how I was treated, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Well, the truth of the matter is that all of us could say exactly the same thing. All of us could exactly say the same thing about somebody, somewhere, somehow treated me wrong. And I'm not discounting the fact that that may indeed be the case, that they treated you wrong, they said the wrong thing, they did the wrong thing, they hurt you, and they did it on purpose even. But what I'm saying to you today is that the forgiveness that is required has nothing to do with them. The forgiveness that's required for you to move on and to, for you to have this restoration has nothing to do with them. The forgiveness is to relinquish you from being chained to it. It's to relinquish you from being in a jail cell to something somebody said to you at some point in time. See, we've got we've to stop being so proud, so proud that we don't take a look back and say, what is going on? Because so many times, this in particular verse of Scripture plays so much into it that we got to stop thinking about the former things. Stop thinking about what did happen or what was said or how they treated you. It doesn't matter how they treated you. You know why? Because you live in a kingdom when you're, where your father, your heavenly father, sent the most precious thing he had to die on the cross to save you, to bring you back into fellowship with him. That's why it doesn't matter what they did and what they said. Not because they were right. Not because they were right. That forgiveness is for you. That forgiveness is so that you can be brought back into restoration with the Father. It has nothing to do with them. It's a freedom for you. 
we must let go of the past and able to grab all, in order in order to grab a hold of God's plans for us. You know, you ever seen that the, the, the monkey swinging through the trees, right? And you notice that he's got, in order, in order to take a hold of the next limb, he's got to let go of the one behind him. So many times, we're holding on to the one behind him. That's why we can't get a hold of the one that's in front of us. It's because we're so concerned about what has happened that we're stopping the restoration, we're stopping that thing from happening and breaking us free because we got a hold of something. we got an anchor hanging behind us. Now, uh, just in closing this morning, I want to read this section of, of Scripture, and we've, we've read it a bunch of times, and we've talked about it a bunch of times. Amos 9.13. But I want you to understand that this isn't something that was just written. This isn't something that just is on a book somewhere. I want you to understand that we have to start taking an active, in-faith role at this Scripture. Because we have talked about this scripture for a number of years at, the, at this church. See, we've got to start looking for the opportunities. We've got to start walking in faith to make this a reality in our lives. We've got to start pushing for this to happen. It's not a piece of paper. It's not words on a piece of paper. It is what God wants to do in every single one of our lives. We've been talking about it all morning. It's about God restoring those things. God restoring those things that have been stolen from us. God restoring into our lives. He already restored salvation. He restored salvation to us. We were, in, we were unable to participate. Unable to be in fellowship with the Father. Because of us, of mankind falling to sin. He provided that way to be restored to him. But see, he didn't, he didn't just want to restore us in a way that we could have fellowship with him, and that's it. That's the end of the story. Right? Well, the next step was what? He, he restored our ability to operate with the Holy Spirit. To have that extra, that comforter, as the word says, that comforter every single moment of every single day. But he also wants us to walk in wholeness. That's health, it's finances, it's every part of our body, every, every part of our life, and every part of what we do every single day. He wants us to walk in wholeness. Why? Is it to heap things on ourselves? No, it's wholeness because that provides us more ability to then reach others. It's all about reaching others. It'd be, it's, you know, we, it, God wants to bless us with money, yes. He wants us to have nice things, without a doubt. That is true. But the number one reason that he wants us to bless, to bless us with finances is so that we can reach the unreached. So that we can go out there. If you don't have, pastor said it a bunch of times, if you don't have money to get to the street, to Tyrus Road, well, then how are you going to go out and get the gospel out there? You know, we've done this just recently. You know, we're raising money to get better equipment for live streaming. Why? It's not just because we want to record services. It's because we are trying to reach that greater northern part of the United States as well as Canada has always been said. Well, there's a way that we can do it that doesn't require somebody to come sit here in a chair, that we can reach out through these, these ways of communication and reach out and share the gospel. Reach out and share the love of Christ to every single person that just happens to go on here. We've had, we've had, and, and we, we watch on our, on our channel on what we have every single day that's watching live. And you can, if you're watching live, you can see how many people are watching live at that time. But what you can't see is the many, many people that are watching through our website that cycles back to Facebook Live and ha don't even have a Facebook. And they're able to get in on this, to get into this, into this and be able to hear the word of God, to see their life changed. This week we had a, a, a voicemail up here, and I don't know how it happened. I have no idea. 
I'm still trying to find out the details from it. But the bottom line is that we have done enough that we are being called about uh, TV time. I don't know what I don't know what it is. I don't. I'm not saying. I'm just saying that we have done enough to be able to be asked about that, because God is taking us in a direction that He wants us to go. Because we're reaching the people that need to be reached. Amos 9.13 Yes, indeed, it won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once, and everywhere you look, blessings. Let's just pause right there. You know what that's saying? Everywhere you look, restoration. Everywhere you look, restoration. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I will make everything right again for my people. Who's, who's his people? Well, come on now. Now all you guys answered. So who is his people? I'm his people. I'm his son. I'm his son. You're his daughter. Hallelujah. We are his people. They'll rebuild the ruined cities. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I'll plant, and I'll plant them on their own land, and they'll never again be uprooted Hallelujah. from the land I've given them. God, your God, says so. See, if that don't get you excited, I don't know what to do for you. If that don't get you charged up for the restoration that God's trying to do in your life, I don't know what to do for you. Maybe we ought to, maybe we ought to get CPR going or something. But you have to understand that God has something for you. You have to understand that when you walk out of here today, that God has a path, a plan, something he wants to do, something that's going to be restored to you. You need to be getting up every single day, and you need to be saying, God, I'm looking for the restoration. Where's that? Where's, it's not about stuff. But where's the restoration? Because I've got a job to do. Where is the restoration? Because I need to get something to somebody. Where's the restoration? There's people that are hurting that need help. See, there's programs, and the government can make all the programs in the world, right? And, and, but the real social program that works is the church, right? And that's through all of history. The only programs that work is the church, the church program, right? It all goes back to that we're supposed to take care of the widows and we're supposed to take care of the orphans, and that's our job. That's, what we're, that's part of what we're supposed to be doing. See, social programs put in by governments, they fund stuff and then the money goes away. And they throw a little bit of money out there, but the money eventually goes away. So it's not about money. It's not about things. It's about getting the heart right so that we can get the restoration right. And that is where we are today. That is why what we've been talking about all morning is about getting back into what God wants for us, getting back out of the world and into the kingdom. Into the kingdom so that he can restore all those things to us. We are going again to see a path that's going to quite so much, I'll put it this way, so much that you're going to be able to see it with your own natural eyes, the separation that you're going to see of the world's path and the kingdom path and the restoration of what God wants to do in our lives and everything, you're going to be able to see it more and more, more and more, more and more. It is the time, it is the time where God is going to pour out his spirit upon every man. It is the time where God is going to make sure that every single soul has an opportunity to come into fellowship with him. See, we're winding this thing down. We've talked about it many times, but we're winding this thing down to where Jesus, very shortly, is going to come back. Very shortly, he's going to come back. That means we have limited time to do what we need to do before he comes back. See, there's, there's a job for every single one of us. 
There's a job for every single one of us, and it is vital to the completion Amen. of the plan. Yes. Jesus very soon is going to come back. We have to be restored enough to be able to go out and sow that restoration into people and bring people into the kingdom. Because when you bring them into the kingdom and you introduce them to Christ and you introduce them to the, the sacrifice that he made on that cross, you introduce them, what you're doing is you're restoring them to what they should have had already that was originally stolen from them with the sin. So I'm telling you this morning that God is a God of restoration. God is a God of action. That he is wanting to restore things for us. He's wanting to restore things to us. This morning, stand with me this morning. Again, there's requirements. There's requirements that we don't, we don't hold, we don't walk in fear because fear negates faith. Fear is opposite of what faith is. So there's a requirement we don't operate in fear. And we don't have to operate in fear. Why is that? Because the word says that you don't have to operate in fear because I am your father. And I will walk with you every single day. And then we also have to let all those old things go. All those things, those, they're junk. They're holding us. They're an anchor holding us. They're just garbage that you're just... You're just dragging trash bags full of stuff behind you that's keeping you from going where you're supposed to be going. So we've got to take and make a choice right off the get that we say, ah, it's enough. You know what? what? The way I've been doing it ain't working. The way I thought I was supposed to do it, it's not working. But the Word's way, if we do it this way, it always works. See, this doesn't fail us. Our way of doing things fails us. And God wants to restore back into our lives today. Yes. Amen? Pastor? Good message. Amen? Yes. We receive that, don't we? Yes. Well, Amen. I do feel better. I do feel better. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank I believe the healing power is working in my body. And uh, been a lot of complications this week, but praise God, we're going to get through it. Yes. And... Uh, we're winners. We're winners. Hey, team, let them uh, worship a little bit, and uh, we're going to get ready to uh, have food for everybody. And uh, praise God, it's it's going to get better. It's going to get better in Jesus' name. You never quit. You never give up. You just keep right on going in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father God, I thank you that you've touched my body. I thank you, Father God, that the healing power is working in me. And I declare in Jesus' name, I will be completely healed and overcome all of this situation. Devil, you're a liar. And Jesus has come that I might have life and have it more abundantly. And I receive that from him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for touching my body this day. In Jesus' name, amen. serve a mighty God. We serve a holy God. We serve the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Let every voice sing out. Let every knee bow down. Let every nation shout that we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. We Serve. 